Sunset's fire nightmare. 23 Sunset Terrace, 100% damage. 25 Sunset Terrace, 100% damage. 96 homes destroyed or damaged. Families left with nothing. All my videos that I've got of my husband and I, you know, when we travelled away for 10 years in the caravan working, I've got nothing except for one photo. WA's worst bushfire disaster in 50 years. Good evening and welcome to this very special Nine News broadcast on the bushfire disaster. We're coming to you live from Armadale and Rolleystone tonight with the latest on the disaster. First, the key points. The tally of destruction has soared. 64 houses have been destroyed, 32 damaged. The fire has now been contained, although fire crews will closely monitor the situation all night. It's understood an angle grinder started the blaze. The Premier's declared the zone a natural disaster area. It's been a day of raw emotion. 64 families have lost their homes. Others face a return to fire-damaged properties. Loved pets have perished in the blaze. Tears flowed freely today as fire authorities read out a list of destroyed houses. Today, Cecile O'Connor joined the hundreds in the evacuation centre. For some, it's as close to a home as they can get. Many feared the worst, then came the grim roll call of homes that had been destroyed. 144 Clifton Street, 100% damaged. 23 Sunset Terrace, 100% damaged. 25 Sunset Terrace, 100% damaged. 50 Martin Street, 100% damaged. Eileen Parker's home of 24 years, one of the 64 burnt to the ground. It's 100% gone. It's completely gone, it's just a shell. Her husband passed away just last year, their mementos gone. All my videos that I've got of my husband and I, you know, when we travelled away for 10 years in the caravan working, I've got nothing except for one photo. The stress at the recreation centre turned evacuation shelter overwhelming. Fortunately, we had friends close by that put us up and uh, I'm sorry. Neil Watterson escaped from his house as it burnt around him. I went to the master bedroom and the duct had just fallen out there in flames and, you know, things were dropping on the bed, uh, dropping on the carpet. He ran outside only to find his car locked, his keys back inside. Well, then the intensity of the flames and fumes in the master bedroom, I couldn't go back in there. Ended up with slightly singed hair. He was forced to walk to safety. There were similar stories around the centre. Well, I'm just beginning to get the reality now. I'm, uh, yeah, just the uncertainty. Photos, medals, destroyed. The fire so quick, some left everything behind. And I had to get out the door. And my dog was on the ground by my feet. And he didn't make it. 26-year-old Adam Whittleston fled his Greendale Place home in just shorts, grabbing precious photos on the way out. All I got out was pictures of my old man who passed away. Um, that's all I got. Courtney Frew was at the big day out when she heard her street was ablaze. This is what it looks like this morning. Her home survived, her neighbours didn't. We've got our own valley that we look over and we have our friends there all the time and now there's nothing to look at. It's viewing our mates' houses that are now piles of rubble. Many were left wondering if their houses were still standing. No, I don't know. No idea. We believe our house is OK, but we have no definitive. Up to 1,000 residents packed into Armidale Arena this morning for information about their properties. Up to 50 men, women and children stayed last night. Why did you choose to stay in your car? Because I wanted to be with my dog. More than 100 are expected tonight. Donations arriving throughout the day. The evacuation centres become a haven where people know they're safe and can seek comfort. In one area there's financial help, in another, counselling. And there are so many people who've lost so much. It's important to stand together as a community and help, because you never know when you might be in that same need. Cecile O'Connor, Nine News.
The volunteers are still busy, otherwise it's quiet now here at the Armidale Arena after a hectic day that saw evacuees receiving regular FISA updates and other briefings on the fire disaster. We now know that the state's most destructive bushfire in 50 years was started accidentally by a local resident using an angle grinder. This is how the past 24 hours unfolded. As the smoke cleared, the full extent of this disaster was revealed. This sweeping grand house now just a charred mess. Home after home lie in ruin. It's a miracle this house is still standing when you look at those around it. This man furiously digs through what's left of his home in a desperate bid to salvage anything he can. At least 64 properties have been destroyed, another 32 damaged, all in Rollystone and Kelmscott. It looked like it was um, napalm. This idyllic pocket of the Perth Hills is just a huge blackened mess. Some residents have been allowed to return home. There's nothing left of Sergio Tucci's house. He can't believe what he's seen. It was crazy. It was crazy. It's going to take years, mate, years for this to get all recovered from this mess. Sergio and his family got out just in time. And then all of a sudden the fire's just come off of the tree and it's hit my aircon unit on the roof and, and then that was history from then. Bromfield Street in Kelmscott is a heartbreaking scene. Somehow Russell Perkins' house survived. But yeah, I mean, it just must have just gone outside my house because I'm just lucky it's still standing. Further down the road, Bob Walton's house is a tangled, twisted mess. The fire was coming up here pretty quickly and it was a question of, do we go? Will I have my wife with me? And I said, no, darling, we're off, we're going. Well, they were the, the roof, that was the roof support. And as you can see, they're you know, big enough to hold the Sydney Harbour Bridge up. And the intense heat just, just buckled. Robert de Graff received bad news this morning. Some of my family have snuck back to have a look and it's gone. And, how is and it was a big, beautiful house. Sorry. Nothing in the fire's path survived. This is Buckingham Bridge on the Brookton Highway. There are still hundreds of evacuated residents who aren't allowed home. This morning they were told if their houses had been spared. 53 Miranda place, 20% damage to house. 57 Miranda place, 5% damage to gold and share. To be patient with us, I know they want to get back in there, but it's really about their safety. We have to be concerned and uh, the police will be enforcing those roadblocks. More than 100 firefighters worked through the night to control this blaze. Flames climbed trees and crews rushed to protect properties. This man's house was surrounded. We're staying all night, spot fires, we've got to, otherwise you know, all this could be for nothing. There are more than 1,600 homes and businesses without power. The battle continued all day and while most of the fire is contained, it's still not under control. Kelmscott and Clifton Hills primary schools will remain closed tomorrow while Hearn Hill will be reopened. Psychologists and chaplains are on standby to counsel traumatised students. So far 800 hectares has been burnt, 10 people have suffered minor injuries including a volunteer firefighter. It's a miracle nobody has died. But even in this darkest hour there's still room for a laugh. The ashes! The ashes! <laughs> they survived. The ashes out of the ashes. <laughs> Nadi Mitsopoulos, Nine News. Martin Koger and his wife are among the 64 families in Rolly Stone, Kelmscott, who lost their homes to the raging inferno on Black Sunday. Today, he steeled himself and returned to inspect the damage. Tell me, what, what does it feel like um, coming back here? Words well, just cannot describe it. It's, all this hard work is just gone. And look around. No other house has been touched. And this one is just nothing left. And as I said to you earlier, I was out fighting fires because I'm a member of the Rollerstone Brigade. And I came down and watched my house burning down. It's, it's a bit cruel. So what, when it started, when you started to hear there was trouble yesterday, you took off to help other people? No, I stayed. I, I got my uniform on. I stayed and we doused down the house because we were having lunch. And one of my guests was a member of the Jaredale Brigade. It's got the gutters cleaned and then we heard the licking of the flames and we just had to go. So I went and um, signed on for duty. 
It's not on for duty. Yes. While your own house burned down. Yes. My oh my. What else can I do? Let's help other people. So it is. It's a lifetime of memories, I guess. I guess you know, it's that old thing. There's everything in there, isn't it? Everything Absolutely that kind of defines everything. you. You say to yourself, "Oh, I'll go home and change." What? <laughs> no, this is all. This is all I've got. My wife's the same. We got her over to Jaredale, uh, so she's safe. The dogs are safe, and now we're. She's out buying underwear for us and toothbrushes. It's it's surreal. I, having never experienced this for myself, have for other people, but not for yourself. It's devastating. As you can see, there is absolutely nothing. Something told me though yesterday, go and get the passports. So I got the passports and birth certificate. So I got something. <laughs> oh man, good on you. Uh Deary, deary me. I feel for you. It's uh, Anyway, I think, I think I'm going to have to leave. Yeah. Good on you. Thank no you, thank you, thank you. Well, here at the Rolling Stone Command Point, it's a watch and wait situation tonight. I'm joined by the incident controller for this fire, Brad Stringer. So, what's the latest? Uh, at the moment, we're uh, consolidating all the work that's been done uh, yesterday and, and last night uh, to uh, consolidate all the containment lines. Uh, we're blacking out to 100 metres, so that's uh, along the ground and up into the trees, anything of, of heat or of an ignition source. Um, so uh, we, throughout the night we're expecting easterlies, but tomorrow afternoon we will have uh, sou'westers, so that'll change the, any fi fire behaviour that we've had previously, so we have to just make sure it's not going to pop out. So explain that to me. So I understand tonight the easterlies will push it one way and then It'll be unpredictable again tomorrow. Is that how? how yeah. It could um, work? With, with with the uh, fire behaviour, it's been pushing from one side, and we may have dormant embers from the the back side of the trees or the bushes. Uh, so that's why we have to totally black out for when the the, the wind does change. It'll fan, and that's where we'll get the uh, spotting happening and, and going across the uh, containment lines. When you say black out, you mean sort of go essentially door to door. You don't just do the perimeter. You, you uh, with, with the do perimeter. The whole Bits. With the perimeter mm. of the fire through the bushlands, yeah, uh, that's 100 metres in. But where all the houses are, we're totally blacking out around all the houses. So it is safe for the for the community when they do return uh, that uh, there is no unexpected uh, fires that will ignite there. You're doing a fantastic job. Thank you so much. Uh, not me, but the whole community and all the volunteers. Good on you, Brad. Thank you. Brad Stringer is the incident controller. Now to Angela's son in the Nine News studio. And Ange, what is that weather forecast looking like? Well, Dixie, while there's been a warm breeze most of the night, winds are expected to strengthen over the next few hours from the east to northeast, reaching 30 kilometres per hour and gusting to 50 k's. So it could test those firefighters controlling the blazes. At the moment in Raleigh Stone and Kelmscott, winds are easterly and gusting to 24 kilometres per hour and it's around 23 degrees. Now, what made the fires so ferocious yesterday were the gusty winds that were whipped up by this strong high pressure system. Now, as it tracks into the bite. Winds will slowly ease tomorrow but a severe fire danger remains tonight for Perth, the Central West District and parts of the Wheatbelt. And that's all from the studio. It's now back to Greg in Armidale. Thanks Angela. There's more to come on this Nine News bushfire special after the break. Welcome back. You're watching this special Nine News Bulletin on Perth's bushfire disaster. If you'd like to help the victims, you can by giving to the Lord Mayor's Distress Relief Fund. Donations can be made at any Bank West branch, at Council House or by phoning 9461 3333 during business hours. FISA has set up a special hotline for information. The number to call is 1300 657 209. And you can also get the latest on its website, which is www.fisa.wa.gov.au. Today, amazing stories of courage and survival began emerging from the disaster, and this is one of the best. Tiffany Wortham met a man who risked everything to save his brother, who's a tetraplegic, from his blazing home. 
Being loaded into an ambulance after a terrifying ordeal, Kevin Roberts is alive, but only due to his younger brother, Sean. Yeah, they saved my life, mate. Yeah, Christ, without them, I'd be just burnt in the house. The brothers, along with their elderly parents, had mere minutes to escape their Raleigh Stone home as the flames took over. 50-year-old Kevin is a tetraplegic, paralysed after a motorbike accident in 1984. His 47-year-old brother, Sean, carried him out of the blazing house. I just grabbed him out of the chair, threw him on my shoulder and just ran. Sean, with the help of his 79-year-old father, carried Kevin about half a kilometre to a fire break. And we just made it down to the bottom of our property and we were just stuck there. These flames were just coming and we were yelling for help. Finally, they were saved by a fire truck. Thank God. I couldn't believe they got through, mate, because there's just black smoke and flames right in front of our house. And how the hell they got through, I do not know, mate. All of a sudden, this fire truck arrived. The f we, me and my dad were hitting the flames out by then with branches. Sean also lost another brother in a motorbike crash, and while Kevin heartbreakingly told Sean to leave to save himself, Sean refused. I mean, even my brother told me to just drop him, leave him, said, just leave me, run. It's still sinking in, mate. I'm just going in out of shock, I think. I keep shaking every now and then from it and thinking about it. Today, we took Sean in the Nine News chopper so he could see if the family home was still standing. Well, I saw that our house still had its roof on, so that was a good thing. But mum and dad's place just um, it's just flat, it's just nothing left. Another tragic blow to a family that has already endured so much. It's just um just a mess. Just a big black mess. Tiffany Wertimer, Nine News. Wow, great story. Stay with us here on Nine. We'll have more on Perth's bushfire disaster in a moment. The cost of this bushfire is still being tallied, but the Premier has moved quickly, announcing the Rolly Stone Kelmscott Fire Zone and Natural Disaster Area. It means people affected by the blaze can apply for immediate cash grants to get them through this very tough time. In the thick of it, our Premier inspecting a scene of total destruction. You can see this is not much to a house, is there? As firefighters kept a close eye on battle lines, the Premier was shocked by what he saw. There's just, I mean, there's just nothing to salvage at all. It's too awful. What used to be someone's swimming pool, now a pond full of mud. The ferocity of the fire none more evident than on Brookton Highway. Until yesterday, this was Buckingham Bridge. The heat just must have softened the steel, a bit like, yeah. a bit like September 11. Yeah. You know, it just softened the steel and it just gave way. While the cost of the damage is still being assessed, the Premier wasted no time in declaring the area a natural disaster, announcing an immediate emergency cash grant. People whose homes have been destroyed will be eligible to $3,000. Those whose properties have been damaged will be eligible for a $1,000 payment. That is to provide people with just some uh, immediate cash. Uh, bear in mind, people will probably uh, only have their clothes that they've got on their back. We'll be making those available so people can buy a set of clothes to stand up on. Uh, and, and some food. But the Premier is well aware it's only a short-term measure to try to ease the heartache. And I'm sorry to say that in some cases, probably most cases, there are just simply no possessions left at all. Uh, the destruction is total. Peter Capsanis, Nine News. Our fires and the recent disasters in Queensland were on the minds of Victoria's Black Saturday survivors as they marked the second anniversary. At a service in King Lake, some said they're finding it harder to cope now than 12 months ago. I think people are finding that it, um, it's welling up inside them. Uh, it hasn't helped at this point in time, you know, with the floods. Many who took part in the brief service helped create a wall of handprints with messages for those they've lost. Coming up on this Nine News bushfire special, the very latest Perth forecast. Angela will be back next.
Hello again. While winds are forecast to be gusty tonight, reaching maximum speeds of 50 kilometres per hour, they are easing and won't be as strong as last night. At 2am, easterly winds were clocked at 70 kilometres per hour. Right now, where the fires are being contained in Rolly Stone and Kelmscott, they are gusting to 24 k's. And the windy weather is due to this strong high just south of the state that will move into the bight tomorrow. Winds easing from the east to northeast here in Perth before a moderate to fresh sea breeze in the the afternoon and looking at a top of 33 degrees. Now to Dixie in Rolly Stone. Thanks Ange. Just before we go a recap of the Rolly Stone Kelmscott bushfire, the state's worst fire disaster since dwelling up 50 years ago. FISA has confirmed 64 homes have been destroyed, 32 are damaged and more than 800 hectares burnt. The Premier has declared the zone a natural disaster area and says people who have lost their homes will receive a $3,000 emergency assistance grant. $1,000 is available to residents whose properties have been damaged. Some people evacuated from the disaster zone have now been allowed to return to their properties to see what is left. Tonight, the fire is contained and under control, but there's concern it could flare up again if those winds pick up. And that wraps up this special Nine News Bulletin on the bushfire disaster. Thanks for your company. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Why does my soul